New workshop update part 17. Last time I showed and discussed the new shop layouts and my thinking behind the tool placement. They have been like this for about the past six weeks with subtle changes, but the shop is operational ever since. I've built the first projects like the workbench and the camera arm and the two signs also found a home. One here and one there. And right now the shop is super busy because I'm in the middle of restoring, cleaning and setting up the big lathe. So the topic today is something you should not forget about, but didn't fit any other video so far, our electrical installation. In the basement, the building is hooked up to three-phase power right here. What looks to be like three-phase 100 amps. From there, it routes up into this cable channel, goes along this cable channel to this wall and then up. In here, it then goes into this cabinet and splits up into the four meters because in this building are four businesses. From here, the wiring for the other businesses routes through various other cable channels into their parts of the building and into their own breaker boxes. Ours routes into this main breaker panel. Here are the main fuses, 35 amps, three phase each. That's how much we get. That's actually how much everybody gets, 35 amps, three phase. And as you can see, we have five three-phase fuses because we have five sub-distributions. The first one has all the breakers for stuff that was already installed before we moved in. So lighting, various outlets, water heaters in the bathroom. Basically everything that was already present in this building before we started adding and building more stuff. Also, every sub-distribution has its own RCD that works for all breakers. So if one of them has a problem or a ground fault, this shuts off everything. Then the next distribution is again in the basement. Right here. Everything in here supplies our kitchen and office. So wiring goes up here. Stuff for the kitchen goes up here through the ceiling. And stuff for the office routes through these channels. Then through this wall into this room and routes up to the office right here. Wiring for the kitchen comes up behind the kitchen through the floor. So there we then have three phase for the stove, a breaker for the dishwasher, a breaker for the three and a half kilowatt water heater, which needs the whole single phase, and another breaker for these outlets where the coffee maker is hooked up. So theoretically, we could fire up everything at once at full power without tripping a breaker or a fuse. That never happens, but I mean, we did things properly. And the other cable comes up into the office wall we built right about here. And there is a mini distribution for all the outlets we installed in the wall. And that's also where the networking cable is coming up and that's hooked up here. We did it that way to have the office and kitchen completely separate from all the power of the workshop. So if anything happens in a workshop and somebody trips a fuse or whatever, the office stays on, which is kind of important because it also supplies our networking gear. Now in the workshop area, every one of us, so me, Robin, Stefan has their own sub distribution. In Stefan's studio, it's right here behind the door. In Robin's workshop, it is right here on the wall. And in my shop, it is there. And my one is the only one that's kind of a special one because I have woodworking machinery and produce dust. So this one has an IP54 rating for dust and water resistance. Made sense to choose that one. And along with that, all of my wall outlets are also like this with an IP44 rating, I think, as well as the light panels. So either dust proof everything or nothing. I went with everything. And I could have shown you the entire electrical installation a long time ago, except until last week, because what's still missing are the three phase outlets. And I wanted to wait with those until most of the machines had their kind of final spot to keep the wiring as short as possible. For now, I will install seven outlets because this needs three phase, this needs three phase, this and this needs three phase, this needs three phase, and of course, the new lathe needs three phase. And then one extra for, I don't know, a dust collection or any other future machine. 
There isn't really much regulation about the installation height, but one common height seems to be 1 meter 50, which is about this. And I kind of like that, so I will install all of them at this height. I set up a cross line laser to that height and I align the lower outlet edge with that. Once all outlets were mounted to the wall, I could install the cable channels and that's actually a big part of the work. There was also one spot with a corner. Easy task for my belt sander with the miter fence. Okay, all cable channels are mounted and prepared. So next comes wiring. And I'm not looking forward to that because I have to work with this two and a half square millimeter five core cable. Ugh, super stiff and annoying to work with. At least there was one simple section. It's also work I probably only have to do once, but especially the triple outlets were annoying because I had to feed three cables through them. After that, I connected them together in the little distribution boxes with Wagos. Okay, the wiring in the little distribution boxes is done. The actual wiring of the outlets and the wiring to the circuit breakers inside here, I will have done professionally. I just left the cables long enough as I was told. Now everything's hooked up. I have four 16M three-phase breakers. The first one supplies this and this outlet, the next one these two, the third one these two next to each other and the fourth one just this one and that's where the lathe is hooked up because it has its own breaker. With that I have enough outlets to hook up every machine and even have one spare for expansion and in terms of standard 220 volt outlets I think I have 12 pairs in here so 24 outlets. That should be enough. Okay, and now leaving my shop again, we have one more sub-distribution outside the three shops, right here. And that supplies our ventilation system and all the outlets outside the shops in the new walls. And we wanted that, so none of us has breakers that don't correspond to outlets in their own room. And it also meant we only had to run one big wire through the channel to this distribution and not a lot of small wires from any distribution inside another room. What you maybe also noticed, we don't have individual meters in our distribution boxes because we have roughly the same power requirements each. We talked about this before, we were okay with just splitting the bill equally so everybody pays the same for power. And that wraps up the electrical installation. If you have any other questions or topics that I didn't talk about or show in other videos, Leave them in the comments, leave your questions there. Maybe we have enough for a Q&A video.